Alrighty guys, what is up? It is me, Cass, from Cass's Critters here, and I am back to using the iPhone to record because it's, I don't know why it's a little easier on this phone, but it just is. It seems to work better and cooperate better. So we are dealing with this, but in this video we are going to be talking about, or we are going to be making an updated list on the species I recommend for newer keepers in the hobby. This, These are all beginner species that I think with research you could totally pull these off um of course everybody's gonna have their opinions and if you don't agree with mine that's totally okay but this is coming from personal experience and i'm only gonna be talking about the animals that i either have owned or currently own so i have plenty of experience with so yeah it's coming from knowledge and experience so uh let's get into this video oh before anybody comments i am so short that I walked into my car door and ruined my head. Yep. It hurts, by the way. It really does. So, if you follow my Instagram, follow my Facebook page, know me personally, or have been on this channel for a while, you all know that I have wide range of experience, so I will have something for everybody. And if I don't, then I'm sorry because I kind of keep a lot, so it's going to be a little hard not to appeal to everybody, but we are going to be also talking about some honorable mentions, and we are going to be talking about why they didn't make it on this list, so buckle your seatbelt, grab your popcorn, whatever the hell you're doing, let's actually start talking about these things. First off, we are going to start with snakes. First off, we are going to be starting with my honorable mention, and that honorable mention is a ball python, actually. I decided to put ball python on this list just because they can be finicky eaters. That is very well known in the community and it is very stressful on the owner to try to get it back on food if it's not already on food and then for it to switch from live to frozen or from mice to rats. So this is why I don't put them as a best beginner snake I guess or best beginner python just because of that and I know that when I first got into snakes and my snake didn't want to eat. I got very stressed, so yeah, let's get into the things that are actually good. Alrighty guys, so for my best python, I chose the spotted python. I've talked about spotted pythons on my channel before, and I have two of them. I have a breeding pair, and let me explain why I love them so much and why I recommend them, because seriously, these guys are so awesome and so, so, so underrated. Man, look at them. They are amazing. Alrighty guys, so I chose spotted pythons as my best python first beginner snake thing uh, for quite a few reasons. One of those reasons being that they are very, very voracious eaters. They do not really ever go off of food, and if they do, it is because, well, something's wrong with your husbandry or the female would be gravid. That's really the only times that they will go off of food. They are just absolutely amazing eaters and will take down any prey that you offer them. So, yeah... These two are also adults. These are breeding adults, like I said, so they're pretty small. They are a very, 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 very manageable size, so if you do happen to get one with a poor temperament, it's not going to be hard to tame them down and work with them because they're just so small and there's really not much to be worried about with these guys. They're super, super cool snakes, super underrated, and I just wish more people worked with them. Look at how beautiful they are. The only downside I can see about spotted pythons is how uncommon they are. Not many people have them or work with them, which is super duper 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 sad to me because these snakes are just seriously so, so, so amazing. Um, with that, they aren't really all that expensive, so I can't even say that. They are just overall a really, really amazing snake. Alrighty guys, so next category would be boas. We are going to be talking about what I personally think is the best boa for beginners, I guess. Now, before we start that, we're going to be talking about an honorable mention. Alrighty, guys. So for our honorable mention in the boa category, we are going to say the Kenyan sand boa. I say it's the Kenyan sand boa because in the beginning they are very, very finicky eaters and they can go off of food and not eat just like ball pythons. Now, 
Y'all are probably saying, whoa, Cass, a year ago, you would have recommended these as the best boa hands down, and I have to retract that statement because, well, after keeping multiple sand boas, I soon realized that going off a of feed is somewhat common um, if everything is not perfect or if they skip a week and they're just, you miss one feeding and they're just off of food for a month. It's ridiculous, honestly. Um, I haven't really found a perfect way to keep them, and I am no longer keeping them. I actually sold my last sand boa recently, probably a month or two ago, probably about two months ago. And it's just a shame. I really wish I would have worked out with those. We will see if I get back into them into the future. I'm hoping I do, and I do have plans for sand boas, but right now, Kenyan sand boas just aren't, just aren't working for me right now. I need a break because... That going off of food was not fun. Now that I've eliminated the sand boa, you are probably wondering what my personal best choice of a pet boa is for somebody who is new into keeping snakes. And if I'm quite honest with you, I have to say it's the Nicaraguan BCI. The Nicaraguan is a locale of BCI that is obviously from Nicaragua and they stay a lot smaller than the normal BCI. They typically get around five foot compared to the BCI, which can grow to about eight or nine, which is super cool that this is a dwarf boa. Um, you guys are probably wondering why I didn't pick the Doomrolls boa, and that's because with Doomrolls boas, they can still get pretty large, and it's just not really all that beginner friendly in my opinion. But the reason, another reason why I said the Nicaraguan is because they come in so many varieties of morphs and so many cool patterns. This is a normal Het Type 2 Annery Nicaraguan that I got from my good, good friend Mike at Balling Boas. Uh, seriously, thank you so much again, Mike. He is beautiful and I love him so much. But these snakes are just so placid, so easy to work with, so such good eaters. I just can't not recommend them, you know? Look at this beautiful boy. I mean, come on, look at this snake. This is my male hypo Nicaraguan. And just, oh my goodness, he is so, so beautiful. And this is my female hypo Nicaraguan. I mean, come on. And look, at, just look at how curious the snake is. Pretty much all Nicaraguans are extremely, extremely curious. That's what I found from my three just, oh my goodness, they are so beautiful. The next category is colubrids, and we need to start colubrids with an honorable mention. For this honorable mention, I have to say corn snakes, and the only reason they are excluded from my list is because I have never owned a corn snake. I have absolutely no experience with corn snakes. I've owned rat snakes, but I've never owned a corn snake, so I can't really attest to something that I haven't owned. Alrighty guys, since I haven't owned a corn snake, I bet you guys are wondering what my top colubrid is for a person new to snakes, and that animal happens to be the western hog nose. And I have a feeling that a few of you disagree with me, whether it be their picky eater status or their venom. Um, let me elaborate on these two because they will both come up in this category. Now, the reason I do recommend these snakes is because when they are the good eaters, when they do eat regularly, they typically are extremely good eaters and won't go off of food for really anything. And you can offer them anything and they will eat anything. So when they're the good eaters, they really are. And it's kind of uncommon now that you do get a bad eater, but it still happens and... It sucks, but look at how adorable these snakes are. Now, as for the venom, the venom potency really isn't enough to do anything or harm anybody besides some localized swelling if you are one of the few people who are sensitive to the venom. In addition to the weak venom potency, they're very, very reluctant to bite. They typically aren't going to bite you unless you smell like food, and it's a very few individuals that actually do that. Not all of them do. It's just dependent on your snake. 
These are also a very small snake, typically staying around three foot as females and more close to two as males. Um, they come in a lot of beautiful colors as well. Unfortunately, their morphs are a little more on the pricey side, but they are so worth it since their morphs are typically super bold and super, super beautiful, and it fits the snake very well. Now, obviously, this is going to be the end of the video since these are the three non-venomous snake families, and I'm not going <laughs> to recommend a venomous snake for any beginner, truthfully. So, yeah, this is the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe because there's going to be more videos like this coming out on the channel soon. I hope you all had an awesome day, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.